The files are located on the second floor, at the end of a long hallway. The fluorescent lights above flicker on and off. Open the door on the right. In the bottom drawer of a file cabinet, there it is, a folder labeled with three words that are poured onto stories. Stories of history, stories of people, stories of death. I'm Luke Poling, and this is Famous Last Words. It seemed like Tallulah Bankhead was always destined to become a legend. No part of her story isn't incredibly interesting, and, really, we could devote a whole season's worth of episodes recounting Bankhead's many exploits. And, really, someone needs to do just that. Bankhead was born in Huntsville, Alabama on January 31, 1902, to William and Ada Bankhead. The date was also her parents' two-year wedding anniversary. Two weeks after giving birth, Ada Bankhead died of sepsis. In her final moments, Ada told her sister-in-law to, quote, Take care of Eugenia. Tallulah will always take care of herself. And really, that ended up being the case. At age 15, Bankhead submitted a picture to a contest run by Picture Play magazine. The contest promised the 12 winners that they would go to New York, where they would be cast in a movie. Bankhead was one of the winners, but forgot to put her name or address on her entry, prompting the magazine to run her picture again under the headline, Who is she? After all of that was cleared up, Bankhead took the trip to New York and was completely enchanted. She moved into the Algonquin Hotel shortly thereafter, ingratiating herself with the famed round table of New Yorker writers at the hotel's bar. Bankhead later said that her father had warned her about alcohol and men when she moved to New York. She added, he didn't say anything about women and cocaine. At this time, Bankhead started a relationship with actress Eva La Gallienne and reveled in making others uncomfortable. At one party, when asked what she did, Bankhead responded, I'm a lesbian. What do you do? And Bankhead didn't discriminate when it came to love. Throughout her life, she carried on relationships with both men and women. However, she didn't like the term bisexual and said she always preferred to be identified as ambisexturous. Broke and still awaiting on her big break, Bankhead moved to London and took a role in the play The Dancers. It was then that her fortune began to turn. During the show's 10-month run, Bankhead started attracting fans who would stomp and scream when she appeared on stage. She appeared in 16 plays while in London and cut a wide swath through the social circle. Carrying on relationships with lords, professional tennis players, and one fake Italian aristocrat. In January of 1931, Bankhead returned to the U.S., drawn by the lure of Hollywood, and an offer of $5,000 a week by Paramount. She spent a year and a half in L.A. and appeared in six movies, none of which were hits. She reportedly spent part of an evening with Johnny Weismuller, best known for playing Tarzan, in the Garden of Eden pool, after which she declared herself a very satisfied Jane. By 1933, she was back on Broadway, appearing in the play's Dark Victory in Jezebel. During her run in Jezebel, Bankhead almost died during a five-hour emergency hysterectomy due to a bad case of gonorrhea caught from either Gary Cooper or George Raft. Leaving the hospital, Bankhead told her doctor, don't think this has taught me a lesson. And it didn't. The parties continued, and Tallulah continued to love to shock people. Or as she put it, she liked to live for the moment. She was known for doing cartwheels, taking off her clothes whenever she felt like it, and using the bathroom with the door open. What are we worrying about this junk for? Let's take a look around for some of the others before that U-boat surfaces again and sees us. She won't surface. One of our shells got her. Are you sure? She was killed dead, darling. Went down like a rock. She also didn't like wearing underwear when she worked, prompting Actors Equity to order her to do so after Broadway goers with, depending on how you look at it, either really good or really bad seats complained. Bankhead's no underwear policy continued on film sets, including Alfred Hitchcock's Lifeboat. Did you see it? It's all in here, my pet. You're Constance Porter. I heard you were aboard. So you took pictures, huh? And what pictures? Priceless. 
When her fellow actors complained to Hitchcock about her practice, he replied that he didn't know if the matter should be addressed by the hairdressing or the makeup department. In some ways, Bankhead could never find a character to play as memorable as herself. She was so iconic, Disney animators said that while they were drawing Coella de Vil in 101 Dalmatians, there was only one inspiration. Yes. Yes, I must say, such perfectly beautiful coats. Won't you have some tea, Cruella? Now, I've got to run, darling. Now, let me know when the puppies arrive. Her final will, two big hits were as the host of a variety radio show called The Big Show and her memoir. This is Radio 1950, the greatest stars of our time on one big program. And the most fabulous part about this, darling, is that every Sunday we will present other stars of the same magnitude. Uh, pardon me if I sound like a name dropper, but... Uh, that's Two things that were completely based on the love people had for her and not requiring her to be anyone other than just herself. As the years passed, however, the various intoxicants that were frequent additions to any party became a daily habit. By age 50, Bankhead was drinking a quart of bourbon a day and washing that down with two and all, benzedrine, dexedrine, and morphine. She had trouble sleeping at night, and often her maid would tape her hands together so she wouldn't get up and take more pills. And this continued good time took a toll on her famous features, too. When one person asked her, aren't you Tallulah Bankhead? She replied, I'm what's left of her, darling. Bankhead died on December 12, 1968, at age 66. She had been suffering from double pneumonia, which was complicated by emphysema and malnutrition. Always looking for the good times to last just a little bit longer, Tallulah Bankhead's final words were a request for more codeine bourbon. Famous Last Words is a production of the Professional Production Company. It is written and narrated by Luke Poling. That, that's me. It is produced by Heidi Hedquist and myself. Our assistant producer is Sabrina Thompson. You can find the show on Instagram and Facebook under Famous Last Words Pod. And on our website, you can find full transcripts, credits, and much more. FamousLastWordsPod.com.